Welcome to the 15th Clean Solutions webinar. Uh, Senior Engineer Jim Doyle is going to present on selecting the right bulk fuel filtration. Thank you, Paul. The objectives for the presentation today are to learn who are good candidates for bulk filtration systems, understand the fuel infrastructure system and fuel consumption for a particular site or customer, learn the key information required to size components for a, a successful system, learn how to determine filtration installation locations in the fuel customer's fuel infrastructure. Lastly, we'd like to learn how to make filtration equipment sizing decisions that can be a pretty involved uh, decision. Uh, fuel storage and handling is done different on each different type customer site. This is a, happens to be a mine site with some fairly large vertical tanks you can see in the background there. Low flow rate dispensing out of the traditional 20 to 40 gallon a minute dispenser uh, systems in the foreground. But in the background, you can see a tanker truck offloading at likely 300 gallons a minute or so. Uh, many situations require mobile fueling where fuel is put into large tanks but then hauled to sites uh, or equipment around a, a work site or a mine or, or uh, hauled out to a different job site. Here's a, a fairly typical 10,000 gallon uh, horizontal storage tank with a dispenser system on it. Uh, that's a very common means of above ground storage. And then there's larger uh, mobile fuel systems here. This happens to service an ag fleet. It's a large horizontal trailer uh, that hauls fuel out to farming equipment in operation and fills it so they don't waste time. So in the Clean Solutions product line, there's sort of two, two approaches. Uh, one is done with just a kit. Uh, you'll see a lot of these style of tanks. This is a horizontal 500 gallon tank. This can be on uh, uh, small farm sites and things like that. Uh, small operations running a couple of bobcats or something occasionally. This is more the scale of things for a uh, kit application. Those are uh, pre-combined sets of components needed. Uh, here you can see a kit installed on a, a little bit larger uh, horizontal uh, above ground fuel tank. There's a, this is a clean and what we refer to as a clean and dry kit. You can see there's a, a water filter and a particulate filter on the dispenser and a trap breather on the uh, tank there. Those are sold as a kit for these types of situations where that tank is maybe getting filled four or five times a year kind of thing. If it's if it's a, a low volume user like that, that's a there's a whole range of those kits to choose from. Uh, what we're going to focus on here is more of a system uh, customer need. And here you can see a, a, a haul truck filling up that's filling up at anywhere from 80 to maybe 180 gallons a minute uh, at 1,000 gallons every day per haul truck uh, fuel use. And there's probably 25 to 75 haul trucks on the site. Uh, the infrastructure is much larger. This is the filtration system uh, for for offloading fuel into the tank farm on site. One of those manifolds is in use uh, while the truck is offloading and the other is in standby in case one plugs, you can valve that one off, valve the other one in and continue that to, to filter. So kind of discussing this, um, one, one thing in the system is, you know, typically like you're seeing on the screen, duplex is really important in applications where there can't be any downtime, uh, eventually filters are going to plug so they're duplexed in, 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 ser in parallel so that way you can plug, uh, close the valves and, and open the valves on the new set and never have any downtime events. The other thing we'd like to point out here is the system on the left is plumbed in series, one filter after the other, particulate filtration followed by water absorption, whereas this system is plumbed in parallel where the flow is distributed amongst four filters all at one time. So the max flow on the left-hand side is about 60 gallons per minute, where the max flow on this one is closer to 400 gallon per minute. And the fuel consumption difference between these sites can be quite dramatic. A large, what's considered a large volume uh, fuel user would be at least a tanker truck every week, probably more. Um, typical mine sites are using maybe three to five or maybe 10 tanker trucks of fuel at 7,500 gallons per truck per day. So significantly higher volume fuel use than say a couple thousand gallon storage tank that's filled half a dozen times a year. Uh, 
to, to gather the necessary information for this uh, type of project, we've come up with a uh, basically a survey tool. It's www.mycleandiesel.com forward slash survey. And it will ask a set of questions just to identify the site, the name, the customer, the distributor that happens to be uh, collecting this information and a little bit of contact information there. There's about seven questions that really need to get answered to get an idea of what is this application and how do we go about applying a, a proper filtration solution for it. So the first big question is how much fuel does your site use monthly? We talked about that a little bit. Uh, a tanker truck is 7,500 gallons of fuel. And we want to know how much fuel are they using a month? Are they using, you know, a couple a month, several a day, that kind of thing. That's a, that helps size the, the number of filters needed in parallel and just to get an overall size of the, of the application. The next question is, what is the fuel storage uh, capacity on site? Uh, how many tanker trucks of fuel are they able to hold or, or uh, are they likely going through it per day? How fast is their tank farm turning over? So there's a list of questions there of, of uh, a few thousand gallons up to many, many truck loads or millions of gallons of fuel on site storage. Uh, the, the picture here shows a tank farm that is uh, four 12,000 gallon vertical storage tanks and a couple of small 500 gallon tanks. So that's a medium sized contractor type uh, fuel tank farm and that's filled a few times a year. Uh, the site application uh, uh, information needed here is what is the tank uh, orientation and that's is, is it above ground, below ground, horizontal, vertical. These are uh, important questions to understand uh, from a couple aspects. The the properties of tanks uh, for loading and offloading that are vertical versus horizontal and how large they are is important. And we really need to get an idea if they are using underground uh, tank storage because filtration application is quite a bit different on an underground tank. The fuel is just drained in by gravity into those tanks and that limits the uh, application of filters. So this is an example of, again, a horizontal 10,000 gallon storage tank. Um, It'll, it'll handle one full tanker truck plus a little bit more. So when the customer's fuel tank gets close to empty, they can order another whole fuel tank and it'll fill it. And it's requesting, the app allows you to upload a photo and it's requesting a, a photo of this, the delivery. Where does the driver drop off the fuel from? It gives us an idea of how much space we have to work with to apply filtration. Here's another example at a tank farm of, uh, of the fuel delivery point you can see this is a, a customer that has both on-road and off-road diesel. Dyed diesel is is uh, non-tax diesel and clear diesel is on-road and it is not uncommon for heavy-duty users to have to ha be able to uh, take delivery and store and keep separate both and you you may need to apply filtration to both of those. So important information. Uh, what type of outlet uh, do the tanks have? What kind of flow rates and, and type of equipment are you dispensing with? And we ask that you upload an a image or two of that. And here's an example of a 40 gallon a minute uh, uh, dispenser hose uh, for dispensing into light to medium duty uh, construction equipment. And even more important than what does the dispenser look like is some information on the pump. This is the pump that actually feeds that hose reel. And if you zoom way in, you can see the uh, model, the manufacturer and model and horsepower rating for the pump. That gives us a very good idea of the flow rate and the behavior of the, the pump uh, in the application. And we'll get into pump behavior here in just a second. That is a very critical piece of information to understand what kind of flow rates you're dispensing the fuel out and sizing filtration. So, uh, you know, like Jim said before, you need pressure to do high efficiency filtration. Uh, what we're looking at here are uh, pump curves. Uh, the blue part is the pump curve. On the left, we have a rotodynamic or centrifugal style pump. Uh, and on the right, we have a, a positive displacement or piston style pump. Uh, and the way you read this is on the x-axis or the bottom, you have the flow rate, usually in gallons per per minute and then the head pressure. So 
whenever you add filtration, you're going to add some sort of restriction. We always want that filtration to be downstream of the pump. You don't want to add it before the pump because you might cavitate the pump. Um, but the way you read this here is on a centrifugal style pump with no filtration, you might be getting 100 gallons per minute plus. But then when you add, you know, maybe a, a marginal amount of restriction, let's call it 5 or 10 PSI, that flow rate might go uh, in half from, from its original value. Whereas we like to see a filtration added to positive displacement pumps, where a positive dis displacement pump, again, you might have 100 gallon per minute. You add 10, 5 to 10 PSI of restriction due to fine filtration, and that might only reduce by 10% or less from its original flow rate. So just a kind of a background. Uh, again, this is getting a little bit more technical, and that's why the survey exists. We're giving you kind of the, the methodology we use to size liquid filtration, specifically for diesel. But if you go to that website, mycleandiesel.com forward slash survey, we'll do all the heavy lifting for you. Yep. It's, uh, it's, this, is, this understanding of this pump behavior is critical when people ask the question, how long is a filter going to last in this system? Uh, the same amount of restriction gives you or from the filter gives a much different look to the customer cutting flow rate in half or cutting it by only a, a small amount just based on the pump, not the filter. It's actually the pump that uh, the behavior of the pump that is the issue there. Uh, next, we'd like to know roughly how many engines someone is running and identify the model year ranges below. We have uh, called out 2013 and newer, 2007 to 2013, and 2007 and older. 2007 and older equipment does not require high efficiency filtered fuel to operate reliably. It, those types of engines, high pressure common rail engines, started into the market at between 2007 and 13 and they're becoming more and more common. So as people are getting new equipment, the, the need for filtration increases. There's been many, many changes to engines in just a few short years. Uh, most of the terms shown here uh, were unknown to the diesel world 10 years ago. And they, these technologies and terms have come into place. Changes in the fuel, uh, additional uh, diesel exhaust fluid, uh, diesel particulate filtration, uh, exhaust gas recirculation, uh, selective catalytic reduction for emissions requirements. The big one is HPCR, that's high pressure common rail fuel systems. Those are extremely sensitive to particulate, far, far more sensitive than the older engines, and that is why we want to apply this type of filtration. Uh, one of the first kind of call to actions on this was identifying who are the right um, customers and who's going to who's going to benefit from this sort of filtration um, it's customers with newer engines specifically and who are having um, uptime availability issues specifically caused by fuel quality problems and a lot of people don't necessarily translate that into having a poor fuel quality but that looks like on engine fuel filter plugging uh, injector failure due to deposits or, or hard particle contamination uh, maybe excessive regens on some of these newer engines and lift pump failures. Those are all signs that uh, a customer has fuel quality problems and would benefit from a system like this. Uh, an another thing to talk about here uh, is a little bit more about tanks. Uh, the, the protection of that fuel in the tank to keep it clean and isolated uh, routinely requires a breather and there are some very uh, important aspects to understand about tanks um, as you apply filtration to it. And I'd just like to highlight again, just one more time, that we can't filter uh, fuel in gravity situations. You will see filters on agricultural tanks that are up on stilts and drain through. Those are not high efficiency filters. They don't generally do anything to impact the actual cleanliness of the fuel. Um, they may allow for some water to settle into the bowl but they don't really do any high efficiency filtration. To do the type of filtration needed to actually clean the fuel in a meaningful way for the engine, you have to have a pump and, and filter in, uh, in under pressure. Uh, so again, to mention you can't, you can't filter in suction also. Uh, once in a while we'll see people put filtration between the tank and the pump uh, in the pipe there and you will tend to starve the pump and that may cause damage to the pump and you'll get very, very short filter life. You can't build up any pressure drop across that filter and suction before you starve the pump. 
breather applications is the big hazard, uh, again, on large fuel tanks. And there's some very important information you need to get from any of those tanks, say a 10,000 gallon storage tank or a, maybe even up to a million gallon storage tank on a large site. There will be an engineering specification plate on the tank itself that says, here's how big the tank is, how many gallons it is, whether it's double wall containment or single wall containment. And then most importantly, there will be a pressure and vacuum rating, normal pressure and normal vacuum uh, limits to that tank. That means how much pressure can you build up as you pump fluid into it? And more importantly, how much vacuum it can tolerate as you pump out. The higher flow rate you exit the tank, the more potential you have to build vacuum. And then when you put a breather on that, the, the inlet for air into that tank, you need to make sure you're in the range that's safe for that, uh, that tank. And usually that's an inch or two of water uh, in, in vacuum that, that the tanks can tolerate. So that's a very critical parameter to, to, uh, to get a handle on. And just kind of as a, a legal disclaimer, you know, our breathers aren't meant to replace the normal safety venting of tanks. So tanks should have um, proper safety venting on, on them and, and, and be checked regularly for those gaskets and proper functionality. Uh, one, one more important thing to understand is no two customers uh, tank system and the way they're using and handling their fuel is the same. Every site seems to be different. Uh, a fuel truck comes and delivers fuel into their tank farm, uh, but they may not even fill equipment out of that. They may only put it in fuel trucks that drive out to sites where they're doing work, or they may distribute it by uh, fuel trailers or fill equipment directly. A lot of that is important to understand where to put the filtration to do the most good for the customer. We prefer to filter fuel as it comes off of the tank when, tanker truck as a customer takes uh, possession of that fuel. You're doing a, a very good quality check on that fuel at the time you're taking possession of it and you're not contaminating any other fuel you have on site. Your tank is then isolated from the outside dirt coming in from a new delivery. But you may not be filtering directly on the way out of that as you fill equipment if all you're doing is putting that in fuel trucks that drive out to equipment elsewhere. You'd be much better off in that case to filter on the outlet side of the fuel truck uh, and not where it's coming out of the large bulk tank. So we like to, we like to uh, adhere to the policy of clean the fuel when you take possession of it, protect it in storage with a breather, and polish it just before it goes into a piece of equipment. On top, on top of that, you know, uh, giving your customers the biggest return on investment, uh, a tanker truck, 7,500 gallons full of fuel is a $25,000 investment. And ensuring that inlet filtration is, is there to make sure that the fuel is meeting specification and fit for use is, is uh, the best return on your investment, whereas the outlet filtration right before you go into your equipment is the most critical. So if uh, Finances are, are an issue and you know are, are really tight. You want to do the, the filtering right before it goes on to the equipment if you're going to do anything. An outlet filtration can look uh, quite a bit different. Again, here's a 10 to 20 gallon a minute dispensing application filling school buses. There's a, a filter on each dispenser line there to make sure you've, you've got the fuel as clean as you can right when it goes into the piece of equipment. Uh, same idea is going on here, again, with that haul truck filling type situation, but you're talking filtering one to 200 gallons a minute, and you, you have to have uh, some backup filtration ready uh, in standby there in, in case things start to plug. But you're, again, doing the same idea. It's just the scale of the application is different. Uh, here's an example of a mobile situation where a, a fuel truck is filled up, and you want to make sure fuel is as clean and dry as possible as it goes into, say, construction equipment on a, on, a, on a temporary job site. And in this case, you'll see fuel comes out of the tank. It goes through a particulate filter. You can see a pressure gauge. The, the particulate filter is on the right in this case. Uh, then it, you'll see a pressure gauge there. A pressure gauge in the middle is between these two banks of filters. And then it goes through water filtration to remove any free water that's come along and you'll see a pressure gauge on the downstream side of that. This way you can monitor, are you loading the particulate filters or are you loading the water filters? 
and you're ensuring that you're putting only clean and dry fuel coming out of that mobile tank into a piece of equipment. Mobile applications for filling like this, if that tank is dirty and you fill it with fuel and drive out to a piece of equipment and immediately start pumping fuel into the equipment, you could put very dirty and very wet fuel into a piece of equipment uh, inadvertently uh, in that situation. There is no time for, for dirt and water to settle out of that mobile uh, fueling system because the truck is out driving around and stirring it up. Uh, just a few tips on hardware installation to give people an idea, why, again, why we need these pictures. You saw this very tank earlier without filtration installed, and we have installed a manifold for filtering on delivery. So a tanker truck pulls up, hooks up, it goes through that bank of eight filters there uh, on, the, on the side of the tank, and there's easy access for drain and, and uh, isolation and change out, uh, easy access. Easy to read pressure gauges on there. It's in a spot where uh, anybody can get to it. And you expect these filters to be doing the vast majority of the filtration work. You want to make it easy to service. If you tuck that manifold way down under the tank where nobody can get at it and they have to change it every couple of months, they're not going to be very happy. So always keep in mind you're not trying to tuck a filter out of the way necessarily. You're going. This is a filter that's going to be serviced routinely and you want to make it easy. Uh, here's another example of a of uh, filtration coming off of a fuel delivery truck into a tank farm and in this case again it's a larger scale version of this do particulate filtration uh, four elements in parallel there to to uh, remove particulate and then it goes into a second manifold bank of water filters to look for free water this isn't common in the US and Canada but in South and Central America and other parts of the world it's not uncommon for fuel to be replaced in a fuel truck by some water by someone and you want to protect putting all that water into uh, into a bulk tank uh, on delivery so this is more of an emergency situation not managing ongoing uh, high water levels in a fuel supply so uh, this again this can look different for different types of job sites but just a few different examples here here's a larger volume user this is several truckloads a day type size volume using a 12 filter inline manifold for particulate removal. Here's another version of that, just in a different orientation, but again, easy access to get at and drain things and clean and switch filters out quickly. It takes only a few minutes to change the filters out on something like this if you set it up correctly. There's another bank of manifolds with easy room to put a drainage tray and even a drainage uh, line out the bottom to gravity drain. Uh, upon change and get things drained out dry before changing filters and back into service. Well, we appreciate your time. Like we said, this is the 15th Clean Solutions WebEx that we've done. Uh, every quarter we host one uh, about 20 minutes long. You can find them saved to our YouTube channel or on mycleandiesel.com under the resources tab and videos. Um, please connect with us. Thanks for your Yep, thanks everybody. Again, it was uh, mycleandiesel.com, and uh, this will be uh, th this and many other topics covered there, all in video uh, and other papers. Thank you very much.